Good morning guys, I'm Joke and in this video I'm gonna talk about the two decks that I used to get into God Rank this season. Alright, first up is the deck I called Plague Ursus and you might have seen some videos about this from uh, my YouTube channel or so. So this deck is based around Gabriel Enchantment which is an event that says a creature's attack becomes equal to its life and you draw a card. So. With this card you want to have a lot of creatures with a lot of health and uh, the main creature that I'm using to win games is uh, the Possessed Ursus uh, which says whenever this creature is dealt damage it's du it doubles its attack. So if I use Gabriel Enchantment on this it turns into an 8-8 eight, eight, and then every time it takes damage it doubles. So it just needs to take damage twice to be able to kill your opponent in one hit. And I have a lot of things to make sure this possessed Ursus does take damage. First of all I have three plague bearers and when plague bearer dies it deals two damage to all creatures and um, this is a great opening hand card as well because it stops uh, aggression at least to some extent. It's pretty good at defending. It's very good against the uh, green yellow sacrifice meta that's pretty popular right now because a lot of their creatures have two health. And if you have two of these, it's, I mean, it's four damage to all creatures, so it's pretty strong. And I do run one famine, does one damage to all creatures. This I sometimes also use to proc my own plague bearer. So one plague bearer and one famine deals two damage or three damage, but it deals damage twice to the Ursus, which means it doubles its attack and then doubles it again, which is very important. And then I have three falcon dives, which can also be used to just ping it up real quick. I also run a lot of cards that allows me to draw additional cards. One of them is Fee the Forest, which also allows me to gain that extra fairy when necessary or clear a creature from one of my forests that's actually oftentimes pretty relevant. And uh, also it's another trigger to uh, proc my Plague Bearer, which is uh, oftentimes really helpful. Uh, more card draw I have for um, Forbidden Library and uh, also from my Gabriel enchantments. And um, apart from that, I run some supporting creatures like Tiki Piper. Tiki Piper can uh, gain, give another creature a lot of health, which helps a lot with the uh, Gabriel enchantment. If Tiki Piper puts its buff on the Living Willow, that's a two turn lethal, or if you put it on your Ursus before you use enchantment on it, you only need to deal damage to your Ursus once uh, to have lethal. <coughs> I run one healer because there's a lot of burn in the meta or sometimes I even use this as a fighting creature. I turn it into a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, Huntmaster is an incredibly important card here because as long as I make sure that I have an aggressive forest and it doesn't even have to be super aggressive just so that it is in range to teleport a creature onto um, an adjacent tile and then move from that tile to hit the orb. So I try to always make sure I have at least one forest close to my opponent. Preferably more if it's possible. And for the rest of the cards I do have one enchantress which is basically the same thing as an enchantment. It's slightly worse. It's uh, more expensive and um, you don't get to draw a card from it but um, sometimes you just need to get up you know a 7-7 taunt to defend and then it's important to be able to find these enchantments quickly. I run one copy of Triton Banquet and it has actually won me a lot of games because people when they see the Ursus and the Plague Bears and the Falcon Dives and so on they start to position things around your forests or on your forests and if you just make a new forest and teleport a creature and then banquet and it goes really wild. You get a lot of reach thanks to the Triton Banquet in combination with Sagami Huntmaster. When I play this deck I always open with a lake. Doesn't matter if I have three green cards on my hand. Um, and the reason for that is just in case I manage to draw a library on turn two I really really want to be able to play it and not only that pretty much all my creatures uh, are really bad without the enchantment on them so getting my green creatures out doesn't really help me that much because 
Harvesting with this deck, I have noticed, is not really that important because it's a really cheap deck. The average cost is 2.8. I can almost always play um, my combo without harvesting a single Faria in the entire game. And another reason why I want to drop my Lakes first is then I can put my forests more forward. And as I said before, having a forward forest is really important. And when I do my mulligan, I always want to have... Um, I'm always happy if I have a Possessed Ursus, a Gabriel Enchantment, a Forbidden Library or a Plague Bearer. Those are the cards I like to open with. Forbidden Library is probably the, the most sweet card and also an enchantment because with the enchantment I can then turn a Ursus into a 8-8 eight, eight, or a Living Willow into a 7-7 seven, seven Taunt and so on. Alright, so the second deck that I have been using this season to get into God rank is my version of the Red Rush, which is a lot faster than uh, most of the Red Rush you might see on the ladder. The reason why it's faster is a lot because of the list that I'm running. I'm not using Cypher's Fodder, I'm not using Cobalt War Beast, and I'm also not using the Bomb Slinger. The reason for that is because I only want to play a single mountain until I have a big uh, Firebringer or a very cheap Hate Seed. So if you take a look at the land requirements, I have nine neutral cards. Um, and the neutral cards are really, really important for this deck because I need to, um, on my second turn, I need to drop a creature that then can step onto my opponent's lands to prevent them from blocking my own lands. And um, the really big goal with this deck is to just get that one mountain next to your feria, uh, your opponent's fairy well, close to their orb. And you can play neutral cards or like prairies until you manage to secure that. That is really important. Then you can just stop dropping stuff. So I have nine cards that requires nothing when it comes to land. I have, uh, and then all my other creatures just require one mountain. Except for the Firebringer and the Hate Seed, which you anyway don't want to play anytime soon. So, you also have the Fire Elementals to help you get the, the lands out if you're like having a tough start, or if your opponent is trying to block your lands, or just to get access to that Cypher's Wrath or so. And um, yeah, if you take a look at the cost of these creatures, also you can see that the most expensive creatures is. King's Faithful. I'm not going to count Hate Seed because you're never going to play Hate Seed for 6 anyway. So the most expensive creature is King's Faithful. And uh, if you manage to get the land spot that I want you to get, which you should in most games, it's sometimes difficult when your opponent plays Elementals, then they can mess you up. But oftentimes you manage to get uh, get that land that you need. Sometimes you have to play double neutral and then turn one of the neutrals into a mountain, but that's worth it, trust me. So if you just play a creature on um, on that mountain every turn, then you will always be able to play a creature, which is really important. You will never have to have a dead turn, as long as you have that creature spawning there so it can collect. And even if it cannot collect, like if they kill it on their turn, for example, you will still be able to play any creature you have or draw except for King's Faithful because you can always plus one Faria. Because once you establish that land, you just gain Faria so you can put up more pressure all the time. Or if you need to, you can play double prayers to prevent your opponent from making aggressive lands. I feel like this deck is uh, really powerful. It doesn't have the same comeback feel like strength as other Red Rush with Bomb Slinger or so. But this deck will pump up your Firebringer faster than I think any other deck. And it will also put so much pressure on your opponent really quickly that um, they might not have time to stabilize and take that game long enough for you to need to have a comeback card. So yeah, I'm a big fan of this deck. And um, when you mulligan, you just get rid of everything that's not neutral unless it's a fire elemental you could keep one fire elemental i wouldn't keep two and um, the absolute best card to have in your opening hand is probably probably king's faithful 
you can play it on turn two on your like really close to your opponent or if you're playing second and your opponent is rushing you like playing double neutral you can play double neutral and then explore and then drop a king's faithful on top of that so you can step onto your opponent's land next turn king's faithful with its four attack trades into a lot of cards in this meta also it's good against the dune drake shedding pest uh, all the good stuff it's uh, really strong and it also helps you set up your shedding pest because it's quite hard to remove the Silent Horse Master. Sometimes you get to get like really good value of the gift, and that feels really awesome. But even if you don't, don't feel afraid to just play this as a harvester and then just attack with it. It's um, it's still buffing your Firebringer and your Hate Seed, so it's a neutral card. That's the biggest bonus of this card, not its gift. The fact that it's a neutral card for three. Is uh, it's this card's strength in this specific deck, and this might be obvious for most players, but if you look at the cards that I'm running, every single card of these, except for the Firebringer and Hate Seed, and the Cabal Barracks, will buff the Firebringer and the Hate Seed because they all have more attack than life. And that makes your Firebringer and your Hate Seed really, really valuable. But you don't want to have them too early, is the thing. Alright, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will have some fun with these decks. Let me know in the comments how it's going for you. And one last thing, the votes are now open for the monthly cup favorites. So I would really like to participate in that tournament. So if you don't mind or if you don't have anyone else to vote for, I would really appreciate your vote. All you need is to go to esports.feria.com and uh, click vote for your favorite. Alright, thank you very much and good night.